got uh, two of your fighters that are going to be fighting on November 4th. Uh, give us an introduction to them, let us know what their records are, and uh, just uh, talk to us about them, what you've seen them mature in, and what, you know, what, what, what people need to look forward to, and where they could catch their next fight. Uh, Nacho, Nacho, talk to us about uh, Tenochtitlan, talk to us about his career. I know he's the young up and coming guy. He's the one who just barely fought like twice at Belasco. So talk to us about him, what you've seen him grow in, and also talk to him because I have the same issue. Me, you know, I'm a little <laughs> close to 190. He's a, he used to be around that weight, and now look at him fighting at like 120. So talk to us about him. Hey, um, that's Tenochtitlan Nava. He's 23 years old, 3-0. And his, um, his next fight is going to be on November 4th at the Velasco Theater. Um, this is a kid who started when he was 17 years old, soccer player. He came in weighing 200 pounds. Because really? he soccer, uh, uh, soccer. Yeah, he soccer, soccer. <laughs> he said he wanted a box and um, we were like, yeah, whatever, lose weight first, whatever, you know. And look at him now, he's fighting a 128 and he's a pro now, five years, six years later. What's his record? 3 0. 3 0, 1 knockout. And he's fighting on November 4th at the Velasco Field. Now, Jose, talk to us about Rafa, his uh, career, how it started, and how he came to you guys, and what you guys have been working on with him, and how he's progressed in his career. Well, Rafa, um, he's um, from Kansas, uh, Garden City, Kansas. Um, one time he called um, Nacho and um, tell him he wants to come and box, and, uh, and uh, I think Nacho gave him an attitude. And, <laughs> and, and That's Nacho. That sounds like Nacho, Nacho. yeah, it sounds and, like Nacho. Um, you know, but everything, I mean, the other day he was here, um, we started working with him, uh, he came and he told us, I'm not fighting no lower than 128. I'm like, bullshit, you're fighting 122. He's like, never been that low in my life. I'm like, okay, let's work. And I mean, he's fighting 122 right now, he's making weight. Uh, we got what seven fights together? Seven fights, uh, all, all wins. Um, and and he has a tough fight this uh, November four. He goes against uh, some guy. Some guy. Uh, he's uh, undefeated as well. But I, probably I can say the name. He's Pablo Rubio. Uh, and I mean we're gonna beat him, right, <laughs> Rafa? We're ready. We're working. I mean we're we're confident every fight at a time. You know I got great. I got a great team behind me. Um, Great trainers. Um, like I said, I've been here three years with them now, and, and every every fight's been a win. Um, I can confidently say it's going to be a great fight. November no, fourth, there's going to be a lot of action. Talk to us about your uh, training here and everything. I know when you started off, yeah. you already had a defeat on your record when you got to them. I also know that you uh, speak with uh, Ortiz or Rios or both, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. So talk to us about what Dave talked to you about up and coming. I know, like I said, you've been here for like three years now. So talk to them about how they've helped you and what advice they've given you in your career. Uh, you know, it's kind of been a lot about me right now since I'm an upcoming fighter. You know, I've been, I've been kind of just sticking to what I know with that training. You know, here with Westside and Salcedo brothers. You know, we've been sticking to this team. I've seen, I've seen my boys around. Uh, Victor, I've seen them at one of the fights. You know, and. You know, just the fact of seeing him always makes me want to keep going, pushing forward, you know, because it's, it's somebody I looked up to, him and Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios, I also seen at one of the Blasco fights, and uh, it, it always feels good to see back a, you know, a native from Kansas, and, and it makes you happy, it makes you excited to know, you know, hey, one day I said I was going to be just like them two guys, and now look where I am. So, you know, hard work, patience, and dedication gets you where you want to be. Now question goes to both of you. What inspired both of you guys to actually not only start up boxing, but actually take it further and become professional? Um, for one, it used to be fun and games. You know, I just loved boxing, period. But now it's, it's, now it's come to a point where it has to do with my wife and kids. And, and, and you know, when it goes, it has to do with that, you know, you better be ready for war because I'm not going to go down as easy because it's, it's got to do with feeding my kids, feeding me, feeding my family, have a, supplying food for for the family, you know, so now it's, it's business. So that's what keeps me motivated to push forward. You know? Well, for me, it goes for same same thing. I, I just don't have kids. And uh, a lot has to do with my brother, Gexa. He's the he's the backbone. He's always pushed me every day. I wake up and he's all like, you got to go to the gym and work. And he's telling me stuff that I already know, but motivating me. 
So yeah, I get, give a lot of credit to my brother. Now talk to us about how these two, Jose and Nacho, have helped you guys out in what is your career so far. Um, as far as you know, both of these guys are great, man. They're they're awesome trainers that I have now, and 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 I'm, you know, as, as this career goes, I. I just I haven't seen any mistakes done by them. You know they've actually made me. Obviously, you could look at the records. We've we've taken all wins, no losses. Um, I'm really proud of that, and I can see it in myself. You know the 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 stamina, the strength. The you know we've worked on just about everything, and everything's been tight. You know so good. I got good good like I said, good team behind me. The whole West Side and these two guys, Southside Brothers, man, they're, they've been great. So. It's a well. It's a, it's a good vibe with them it, in the gym and outside the gym. They treat me like family and they treat me like their son. And they, when it's time to work, we work. And when it's time to like play around, fool around, we do. We do have our side times, but it's mostly they they they're pushing me. They've been on on our asses. So like. <laughs> Now talk to us, you two, about your, your third fighter who isn't here right now, uh, Nick Arce. Obviously, he suffered his first defeat a little while ago and everything, but you guys are obviously going to push for him to continue to further his career and be where he was at just a few fights ago. Obviously, like we stated earlier, Golden Boy loves him because he sells a lot of tickets. He gets a lot of fans excited uh, from the first fight to his fight and even into the last fight. Fans are in the stands chanting his name. So... Talk to us about him and when we could expect him to probably come back. Well, right now he's taking a little time off. Uh, he has some family problems and uh, we don't think he's ready yet to come back, even though they want him to be back. Uh, we gave him a couple of months off, you know, just to get all, everything straight and everything together. And uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's 19, 20 years old, so he's, he's young. Yeah. He'll be back, he'll bounce up. That's, that's experience, man. I mean, I mean, if you boxing, anything can happen, and um, and you know what? Sometimes uh, I think uh, things happen for a reason, and I think that loss was happening for a reason to keep the feet on the ground and everything. And I mean, just start again, like hungry as we were um, the first fight. Nacho, uh, I think he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He just just a little time off, get back and his mind together again and start working hard. Start working hard and take whatever it comes. All right, well, I'd like to thank both of you guys for your time. Let me ask some you questions. Oh, go ahead. So, 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 uh, go ahead, bro. So, you <laughs> have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nick, the three of y'all, Nick R said, do y'all ever talk about fighting each other? Yeah. Uh, so, y'all, it's simple. I know, I know, but do y'all know about, like, fighting for a belt? Like, do y'all, like, how good would it be to beat him for a belt and vice versa, or Nick R say? You know, um, you you know, that's a, that's a that's a good kid, man. And and if it ever comes down to it, you know, you got to put all the friendships aside, you know, because it, it's a fight, just like any other fight, uh -huh. you know. And and I'm pretty sure if I get in the ring with that guy, it's not gonna be let's play around, let's take it easy. It might it might be like that in the beginning, but once you get in there, you know, I think shots are gonna be thrown, and and, it's, and you know that friendship is just mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna fade off on its own. So regardless if we try to keep it that way, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, same thing goes for me, but that that's my boy. Like, man, just, just like, man, hitting him with eight ounces, like, shit. <laughs> it's like it's it'll be it'll be tough, but if it does happen, it it, ha it has to happen. I mean, it's it's what the people want to see if it comes to that point. I just don't think I don't. You know, we've sparred each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, and if anybody's came in here and seen a spar, it is a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I can honestly I say, all the time. I can honestly say, if it were to fight each other, it's not gonna be no problem because we do it in the ring already. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just the way it goes, man. Boxing is boxing. Mm -hmm. I was telling, I was telling uh, Nacho and Jose that uh, like your eyes have changed since I've, I've been working out with you probably the past six months, and like your eyes have changed like into like you've gone from like in my eyes like okay I'm doing this to now like. I'm about to kill these motherfuckers now. Like, for real. Like, I see it in his eyes. Like, I was telling him, like, you're not in the gym. I said, man, it's a story behind. It's something about his eyes. It's so intent and, and so distinct. Like, where's that coming from? Um, you know, I, I feel, honestly, 
the last couple of fights I've I've been feeling I got something to prove. You know, I got something to prove, and I would like to prove it with the Salcedo brothers. Personally, I have something to prove to them, and that's just the way it feels. Cause I didn't come way out from Kansas just to slack or not prove what I got to prove. You know, and I want to show them and the world that I'm gonna be coming. I'm gonna be coming up, and soon I will be a champ. And these two guys will be right there beside me to notice it. Now, I wanted to bring up something to both of you because he said it. Basically, in boxing, you take shots. Media. We, 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 have, issues. we have issues with media and boxing, right? Some media members could be negative to certain things. Like, I remember back in the days, I was telling you guys that I used to watch Epics when it was a streaming, a streaming service, and they used to do the Klitschko fights. Dan Raphael would be on it, and he would be so negative to the fight and would turn me off. To want to watch the fight, but I would still watch it because I love boxing. But it's like, have you guys had that where like media members would come at you guys negatively or say something negatively about your fighters or say something negatively about your training methods or everything? Fights, I put it on mute. Hey, I was gonna say that. I watch the fights. You know, when I review my fights of my of my guys of my guys, I always put it on mute. I did it the first one or two times, and probably you know take the constructive criticism. criticism. But then after that, it wasn't no criticism. Uh, contracted cr cr whatever Persever, that is. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't that anymore. He was just trying to destroy the kid, you know? I don't know if it was some kind of uh, a jealousy because he sells tickets and he's not that good and somebody else should be selling those tickets, but it's not his fault. You know, at the end of the day, it's not his fault and he's only 19, he's only 20, and do they do anything right? I don't think so because they never mention it. They always just waiting for that little thing that they do wrong. Or, or, or just trying to see how many tickets they sell to, to, to bury him down. Because you know? like this guy, in his last fight, they were talking about him, oh, they're always comparing him, like, oh, he's not like, he's not like this guy that he had an outstanding amateur record, he's not like this other guy that, okay, are you gonna give him credit because he used to weigh 200 pounds and now he's 3-0? And, and now he's fighting at 128? And he's, doing, and he's not doing it bad? I mean, is he not getting any credit for anything, for selling? Uh, 200 tickets at the, at the Velasco, then nobody else does. The, those guys who were an outstanding amateur boxers, they're not selling not even 50 tickets. So are they getting any credit for anything? That's, that's my only thing. Jose? Say it all. I watched my fights on me. That's it. I mean, like, like he said, uh, you take Sometimes you hear those guys and you, you know you take good things and bad things, but sometimes it gets annoying. I mean, it's just one thing or the other, one thing or the other. And I mean, what can I say? It, I'll, uh, I'll add to it because I remember like when you guys were like uh, Nick Arce's last fight. I, I wouldn't. It was at Fantasy. No, Fantasy Springs. No, no, no. It was at the. Um, what was that? Stop, stop, stop up. Stop up. No, no, not that one. The one I saw on Ring TV. I was at that fight. The one I saw on Ring TV. That was last a Fantasy. Then the last one was a Fantasy. Fantasy when he lost. When he lost. Fantasy yeah, it was Springs. a Fantasy. Fantasy, Fantasy Springs. Springs. And I was like, man. I was like, Nick, you gotta kick his ass. It was like Friday before you guys were going and stuff like that. And then I watch it. I watch it on uh, YouTube. I was watching the fight on YouTube, and uh, I was like, just. The bombardment, like, like he was saying little things like the motherfucker need to just stand in front of a heavy bag and just work on his one-two, like, like amateur type shit. You know what I mean? And I just thought that was just very condescending, especially like you said, when the guy is selling out tickets. But at the end of the day, when you have young fighters, eight and one, eight and one, three and zero, oh, uh, eight and one, Nick. Eight, yeah, eight and one now, Nick. You you want these guys to to reach their full potential at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, who, who wants to live life saying, I could have, should have, would have? You know what I mean? Let these guys go through the gamut. If they lose on their own merit, they lose on their own merit. If they win on their own merit, they win on their own merit. But don't tear down, don't tear down the potential castle that they can be potentially building, you know? For example, uh, uh, Gramajo's fight. Uh, uh -huh. He fight this kid from, uh, what is it, Cincinnati? No, no, San uh, Luis. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon, uh, Sharon? Sharon, Sharon Carter. Carter. He was 4 and all. Um, you know, they right offered, number two yeah, the they offered the fight, I'm like, okay, no videos or anything. Uh, he was on the um, Olympic team. He didn't make the Olympics though, but he was he was number two in the nation as an amateur. And um, way more experienced. So he came in the Velasco and he, they were like, oh shit, this is a big mismatch. I mean, this guy is going to school um, Gramajo, blah, blah, blah. So one round passed, second round he started taking over and he's like, well, but uh, these four losses, I mean, it's been against nobodies. <laughs> it's for wins. For wins. 
I mean, four wins. I'm they sorry. Start four taking wins. credit off right yeah. away, right and then, away. And then, uh, but uh, amateur is different than pros. But they, uh, they never say, "Oh, Gramajo is doing a great job calling the ring. He's hitting. The, he's he's working the body. I mean, he's yeah, taking." Just to the fight or even anything. even though he was fighting bombs, he was an undefeated guy. He was four and zero. He was number two in the nation as an amateur. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we need to get <laughs> just a little. Bit. And, and let's be honest, that four and zero, <laughs> nobody's fighting anybody. You know what I'm saying? When you're four exactly. and zero, you're fighting. You're fighting like two and ten or something like. The only the only person who was four and zero, and he wasn't even four and zero on his fourth fight, was Lomachenko, and he was fighting somebody. He's the only person. Exactly. No, no. But I'm saying it's like nobody at four and zero is fighting somebody. They're fighting names. They're not fighting names. They're fighting fighters who have had their chances and didn't make it. They're like four and three, three and four, five and six. I mean, Records like and, that. And these three guys are say um, Nava and Gramajo. He has a tough one. I mean, all his opponents are being tough. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all that's, seven. Let's call it how it is. Uh, Rubio, they, they actually wanted you. They selected you. They, yeah, I mean, they picked you. They they think you're an easy fight. Yeah. Obviously, that's why they would pick you. And that's good. Yeah. And that's good. I mean, we like that because uh, as soon as that guy walks out of the uh, locker room, he's going to feel the hate. <laughs> 200, 300 people are going to be there. I, 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 and that, that shit, that, we left no, no, we left tickets for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for and then, I'm rooting for I mean, for sure. the, uh, Great plan. Uh -huh. I mean, you'll see. You'll see. Okay, I mean, my only question that I have for you guys, I mean, you guys yeah. probably know this guy better. Have he ever boxed? No. Have he ever boxed that you guys know? He's <laughs> Kim. Steve Kim. Oh. He's a coward, though. Have you ever boxed? Like, all I know is he trains know at the wild he, card and everything. I don't know how can he judge the boxers so hard. Well, let, let me ask you this. When he hasn't even been in the ring. Let me ask you this. Maybe he's he, bars, I don't know. Like I said, Which Rafael so turned me. Not. Like I said, Rafael turned me off to wanting to watch like mm -hmm. boxing matches on Epics because of the way he talks. Does somebody like like Steve Kim, like you're saying, other media members that talk negatively about fighters and everything like that, do they kind of mess it up for people that are trying to pick up boxing and watch boxing as fans. Yeah, yeah. Like, they kind of turn them off. Because look at the UFC. Let's take the UFC, for example. They're booming right now. Mm -hmm. You never hear Joe Rogan or Mike Goldberg, who are their announcers and everything, Dana White or anybody, talk smack about anything that goes on. Like, even it, like yeah. let's say John Jones for UFC 200. He got busted for PEDs. You only heard about that that week and everything That's like that. It. It's not a repeat thing anymore, yeah. you know? They swept it under the rug, they let their event yeah. go, and they push on to the next event. Mm -hmm. They're they're promoting their event positively. Is the negative effect of media members talking smack like that? Does it affect fans trying to pick it up? Of course. You know what? You know what kids tell me when they walk in the gym? Why he was talking like that? What he was going so That's hard what I on said this guy? And he's like, yeah. he's discouraged all these kids that are trying to be become boxers. Mm -hmm. They're trying to become professionals. Now they don't want to do it anymore because these guys are tearing them apart. It's like, well, this guy. Cause you know the other two guys, they're they they yeah they're they're okay. That's they, okay. They they say things that they write and Doug Fisher and Beto, yeah. I mean they they do what they. But this other guy looks like they just have something personal against us. Mm -hmm. Cause he's most likely it's mostly just against my guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I've been watching other fighters, other prospects, especially in fights that they have him look so good, and he doesn't show that hate that he shows on, against us, and. I don't know. If he, he wants to take it personal, he can just come and talk to me. He has a jealous... I'll Go ahead. No, you follow up on your brother. I'll put the gloves on. Put the gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you know, know what? Like, yeah, like I said, I don't know if because these guys sell tickets and he thinks they don't deserve to sell that many tickets. Oh, well, I guess the people behind those other boxers, they're not working. Now, uh, you guys, uh, let the fans know where they can follow you, social media sites. Obviously, I know you guys post things on the website. You guys post things on, uh, on Facebook and everything and spread it out. But where, do you, where could the fans follow you guys and get to see your workouts and know about your fights that are coming up? Obviously, number one, uh, you have Westside Boxing, Instagram, um, Facebook. You have Gramajo Rafael Boxing, Instagram. And Facebook, um, Rafael Aliquín Gramajo, Rafael Aliquín Gramajo for mm -hmm. Facebook. So you know, check us out. Check out anything you got. You guys got um, questions, concerns? You want to you know look at look at any training, anything awesome? You know, hey, Kansas boys on there. So check it out. You can follow me on Twitter at Denoch Nava or on Instagram at Denoch Nava.
and Facebook. Ben Ochi Tito Lanti Dog Nava. And obviously, you guys said I mean, Westside Boxing. West Side, yeah. Um, you want to purchase tickets from uh, Velasco fights? We sell them here. Any fights? With not a free just shirt. The ones that Our fighters, when they're fighting, we sell a ticket and a free shirt. Like you said. That's it. Alright. Uh, well, Westsidebasket.com too. There's a lot of cool videos right there. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for your cool, time. Well, Rapa, you. good luck November yeah, 4th. The Noche. Así que Have a good one. <laughs> no, and that good we job. talked about. And what would you guys like to say to the fans that want to come over here? The fans that would like to come over here and like to probably just check out the gym, train out, and see how it works. Just come. 4500 West Pico Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Come. Check us out. We don't say much. We work. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no, it was fun. Thanks for the invite. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was cool. Mm -hmm. um, no, thanks for you guys. You got to do it at your gym. It's awesome, you know? <laughs> thanks for you guys. It's fine. It's and, and, um, Make sure to stop saving money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Triple G's gonna beat the shit out of him, but, but I will say this. I, I, I will say this. The fight has gotten a lot closer. Yeah, it's gonna like, be a good fight. In, in terms of Canelo's growth. Like, yeah. we're still on this when, when you pick the fight, <laughs> say it again. We're still on this thread. Yeah. <laughs> like when I said, this is what a thousand dollar bet looks oh, yeah. like. <laughs> when you look we at the fight, every day. you don't, <laughs> you don't bet the day. growth. Like, you bet on where the fighter is right now, and Canelo has. Obviously, grown leaps and bounds since Lara, since uh, he's fought. I don't know who he's fought. L Liam, that guy. I forget the guy's name. Everybody, Liam, Liam, Everybody. Liam Dudu Kirk Smith. Lynn. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bums Kirkland, who took the fight. He was weighing two twenty when he took the fight. He had to lose he was a big fifty guy. pounds. You know, what I mean, big guy. but uh, but yeah, I mean. I'm gonna. So that means I get to train here for free when I get that thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. or, or, or I'm gonna go make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. So and this is my secret weapon. This is where I train at the West Side Boxing Gym. These guys have made me better, and uh, I, I, I just enjoy being around these guys. You know, their fathers in the back, always taking care of things. Uh, family run business. You know, you have your son in here a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and. You train here as well? Yeah, I train here as well. For the people who call me fat, I was 225. <laughs> <laughs> I was 225 when I came here, remember? Uh, now, you're, now, you're now, now I'm like, now I'm like 180. I'm like, I'm like 189, 188. So I'm James Tony 180. Yeah, I'm James Tony 180. No, but, uh, you know, Fred and I train here. We always clown around with them and everything. We always have fun. Like they said, it's a family-oriented place. Uh, his son's always around. His son's actually a photographer. Takes pictures for the WestsideBoxing.com. Uh, takes pictures of the fighters. Also, an artist draws. And it's a really cool place. Come and check it out. Um, Dominic, anything you have to add? Uh, no. Just uh, thank you again for having us here. I believe we'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be here tomorrow. Golden Boy. Um, oh, another media workout. Yeah, yeah, another great show, and uh, looking forward to our next one next week. Did you style big fights? And Fernando Pimentel, once again, for Behind the Gloves, giving a special shout-out to our boy Chris Alexander for the Style Makes Fight t-shirts. Uh, note, he has, you know, he had John Molina, he had Sean Porter when he fought Keith Thurman. Aaron Martinez. Uh, Aaron Martinez as well. Might be a secret one coming up sooner or later. But, uh... Yeah, thank you, Chris, for the shirts. Uh, thank you guys again for actually allowing us to do the show here at the gym in your ring while other while other people worked out and everything. So thank you guys and fight guys saying, see you at the fights. <laughs>